Hi, everyone. I'm Clark Crawford. My vision is to touch the broken lives of humanity in every nation and every country with the salvation message of Jesus Christ. Here's my testimony. The abuse, mental, emotional, and physical abuse started at the age of five by my father. Let me make it very clear. My father passed away many years ago. I forgave my father. He was a hard worker. He only did to me what was done to him. And so I'm sharing my story, but I've forgiven. But I know there's people that are looking in and will see this video that are going to be going through and are going through the same thing I'm fixing to share with you. So my dad was an alcoholic. He was mean, but he was a hard worker. He wanted to live his dreams through me. I was a great athlete, they say. Five years old, I was playing sports. I remember my dad, it started with the verbal abuse. If I missed a free throw at a game, he would cuss me out in front of everybody. If I threw an interception, I was a quarterback. Uh, he'd cuss me out in front of everybody. If I struck out in baseball, when I got back to the dugout, he was there yelling. Listen, discipline's a good thing, but it needs to be done in secret, behind closed doors. So all the way for many years, all the way up through high school, I played football, basketball, baseball. I could never do anything right. And I lived in fear. I couldn't sleep at night. I had cold sweats. I was unhappy. I was angry. And that's how my life went all the way as far back as I can remember, starting at five, all the way up to uh, high school. I didn't smoke my first joint till I was 17. I was a junior playing in high school. I was first junior uh, to play baseball with the seniors at Brian Adams High School back in Dallas. And I remember we had made the playoffs, and but it, we were rained out of a practice, so we went over to a place called Forrester Field in Dallas, Texas, and we practiced, practiced in the uh, parking lot. Well, on the way there, Again, I'm with all seniors. There's two in the front seat, three in the back. I'll never forget. I'm in the middle. And they started passing a, around this, what they call a joint. I was ignorant. So they passed it to me. I said, no. They said, come on. And because of peer pressure, I gave in. I smoked my first joint at 17. I graduated to Brian Adams High School in 1979 in Dallas, Texas. I went off to try to play with the Philadelphia Phillies baseball in Paris, Texas. That was where they were having their trial. I played in the All-Star game at Arlington Stadium uh, where the Rangers play at that time. But I'd hurt my ankle and I was in Paris and I, I'd run in the 40-yard dash and, and uh, I didn't make it. I couldn't swing off my back foot. I'd, I'd hurt my knee, my ankle, and so they sent me home. And I was so happy. I was so happy. I didn't have to hear my dad anymore in the sports. And so I went to work for my oldest brother as an electrician. I have three brothers. Two of them are older, one younger. I went to work for him. I became an alcoholic, smoking weed at the age of 18, 19, 20. Then I, I got married for a very short time. It was actually annulled, as I believe. And um, I left her, and I went, and I was working at a, out at a place called the President's Health Spa in Garland, Texas. I got around the wrong crowd. That's nobody else's fault, but bad company corrupts good morals, the Bible says. Uh, you're going to become who you hang around in most cases. I moved in with them because my wife at the time, I gave her the house. Well, turns out they're selling ecstasy and doing a drug called ecstasy. I tried it. I loved it. They were doing cocaine. I tried it. I loved it. I become an addict as well as an alcoholic. It's been a generational curse passed down. My father was an alcoholic. And um, again, he did to me what was done to him. I became just like my dad. I hated my dad. 
I did. I hated him. And I came, became just like him, an abuser. He abused my mom mentally, emotionally. Me. I was tormented for years. So I turned to alcohol, drugs, weed, women. Got around to, uh, the guys I was living with. Started working out President's Health Spa. Then I got on steroids. They were all doing steroids. I did that from the age of about 22 to 28. This is what happened then. I was 22 years old, and I went out to a bar with a girl, and we came off the dance floor, and a guy had pushed her, and uh, I hit him and with a glass. Actually, I was drunk. I didn't know I had the, the uh, glass in my hand, and I cut his face wide open, and um, almost cut two of my fingers off. I went to jail, got charged for aggravated assault and three years probation. And turns out the guy was her boyfriend and they both turned on me. I started selling drugs. Ecstasy. I got it real cheap. I'd go to bars and everybody would run to me. I sold them for 20 bucks. I got them for five or 10. At that age, man, I was making a lot of money. Next thing I know, I had a, a buddy from President's, Health Spa. <laughs> Bad company corrupts good morals. But you gotta take responsibility, and I did. He said, Clark, can we use your house for a drug deal? All I need is your house. I've got the 45,000 cash. We're gonna buy 10,000 hits of ecstasy. He said, I'll give you $5,000. In my 20s, $5,000 was a lot of money. I said, sure. Long story short, we got set up by another guy who was an informant working off a case. He was snitching off a lot of people. Well, we were one of them. The DEA broke in as I was uh, looking and counting the ecstasy. I said uh, to the guy, I'm not gonna say his name, this is not real. About that time, I looked around the corner and man, they'd knocked down the door, about 30 of them. Man, throw, threw me up against the, the fireplace, used some kind of almost bob wire-like stuff, tied my hands behind my back. Uh, the, my fall partner, he ran, tossed his gun, but they ended up catching him. I got busted with 10,000 hits of X, $45,000 cash. My dad was alive at the time and he paid $60,000, got a high-powered attorney in Dallas. The judge, uh, after us going through all the different things, he promised me and my fall partner 10 years deferred adjudicated probation because the ecstasy was not real. And when the drug, when I was looking at it, I said, this is not real. So it was, it was fake ecstasy that uh, the DEA was using. So if we'd have gone to a jury trial, uh, we'd have probably beat it and got off on a technicality. So the judge said, bypass jury trial, I'll give you 10 years deferred adjudicated probation. That means that if we do the 10 years probation claim, uh, it's not on my record. That was September 23rd, 1988, we got busted. Uh, my attorney said, get out of Dallas. So moved out of Dallas while I was out on bond for 18 months. Went back to court for the sentencing, probation, we were told, January 12th, 1990. I stand up first before my fall partner. The judge says, Mr. Crawford, I t sentence you to the Texas Department of Corrections for a term of 20 years. Cuff him and put him in a holding cell. All I remember was my mother screaming in the courtroom. My dad had just died. My dad had always said, I can never see one of my boys go to prison. So I lived when I went to prison thinking, oh my God, God killed my dad. My dad died because of me. I lived with that for years. Guilt. I went to prison. Toughest one in Texas, Cofield unit. They call it the glass house. Well, that's where I got saved. I always said I'd kill myself before I ever went to prison. Never say never, friends.
Because many times God will let you go through the things you said you never could just to prove that with Him you can do all things. I went to prison on 20 years. And in my 20s, when I heard 20 years, I thought 20 years. I go to the classification. They put me, this is, you catch a chain. I was in jail. And then you catch a chain. I went to prison. I was in the gory unit being classified. They said, the one prison you don't want to go to is Cofield with my color. They said, you're going to Cofield. I did. On my way there, I said, God, you get me out in less than 18 months, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Everybody said, you're nuts. I went to an aggravated farm where you do almost all your time. Well, at the Gore unit, I hit rock bottom. Me, God, in a Bible. It was my birthday, March 19th, 1990, in a prison cell. No visitors, just me, God, and a Bible. I fell on my knees and tears just broke because no mail, nobody, my birthday, 20 years, and I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I knew what you needed to do from being raised in a, in a church. So I repented of my sins. I asked God to please forgive me and help me get through this. And He did. Again, I prayed, give me out in less than 18 months, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Miracle after miracle after miracle. They bench warned me back after 13 and a half months from the prison I was in to Lou Sterrett, to court in Dallas. My attorney called the judge to the stand. The judge either has to testify or recuse himself, take himself off the case, which he did. Because he did us, he knew he did us wrong. They gave, him a new, gave me a new judge. The judge said, I'll let you out today, we'll retry the whole thing, or I'll give you the minimum. You were wronged. The men, my sentence ranged from 15 to 99 or life. They gave me 20. I'd already done 13 and a half months. My attorney said, take the 15, go back, and do your time. I did. Again, I said, God, get me out in less than 18 months. I'll serve you the rest of my life. Next thing I know, I get a furlough for seven days. In that day, on drug charges, you didn't get furloughs. I got a furlough. Got out for seven days, went and found a church, Church on the Rock, Rockwall, Rockwall, Texas. Went back. Okay, I was at 18 months and two days was my release date, which was an absolute miracle. But remember, I said, God, get me out in less than 18 months. I'll serve you the rest of my life. When I came back from the furlough, they said, hey, Mr. Crawford, uh, they're backdating nine days of your jail time. That's the nine days of when I got busted. I was in jail nine days, um, and my dad let me sit there, uh, wanted me to feel the pressure a little bit, but really it was God behind everything. So they backdated the nine days. I got out 17 months and 23 days. It didn't hit me till my mother and my grandmother, they were living at that time, picked me up in Huntsville at the Walls unit. I got in the car, and I'm like, oh my God, God answered my prayer born again in a prison, the greatest thing to ever happen to me. The greatest thing that ever happened to me because I was born again, I was saved, and I've served God ever since. But there's a big difference between being saved and being free. Salvation's instant. Sanctification is a process. I stayed clean a year and a half. And then an old buddy, friend of mine, called and said, Hey, Clark, listen, there's a, a birthday party at, uh, at a club. I can't remember the club's name. And uh, he said, uh, Man, why don't you go? You know, you're strong. You can do it. I gave in. I went to the bar. I got drunk. I hit a curb on the way home. I'd never been pulled over for drinking or drugging or any of those things all these all those years. Hit a curb, go to jail. Now I'm on parole. 
and probation. Not a lot of us <laughs> have been on parole and probation. So they let me out and stayed clean a little while. I met a girl and went back to doing cocaine, drugs, alcohol. I lost my mind. I ran. I ran. They put a warrant out for my arrest because I had gotten a dirty UA. They were looking for me. I was doing drugs. I, I was losing my mind. I finally called my brother and my mother and said, come get me and take me to Lou Sterrett. I'm turning myself in, which I did. So I was in jail. They let me out. And then they sentenced me to six months in a rehab, a jail in Houston, Texas. So I went to Houston. I was, it was a jail, but it was a rehab. I had anger. I was mad. I rebelled against one of the authorities there. They put me in solitary confinement. Well, I hit rock bottom again. I was saved, but I wasn't free. Hit rock bottom. I was gonna hang myself in solitary confinement. They had a thing that I could hang myself with my clothes. I cried out one last time. I said, God, if you're real, you got to do something. I'm telling you, as God is my witness, within 60 seconds, a card, and you didn't get mail in solitary confinement. All I had was a cell and a, and a, and a window about like this. You had a little bit of light. All of a sudden, a card came flying underneath my door. I opened that card. It was a footprints in the sand card. And when I read, when you only see one set of footprints, it was there that I carried you, I fell on my knees on that steel bed and rededicated my life to Jesus. I got my act together, did my six months, came back out. A few years later, I met my former wife. We had two children. We moved to California 2008. I was not a good husband. I was not a good father. I was just like my dad, mentally and emotionally. Not physically, but mentally and emotionally, and that's the worst kind of abuse. Physical, of course, it's all horrible, but they say a black eye will heal quickly. Mental, emotional sticks with you for years, I know. I just up until about five or six years ago would always remember what the words my dad and others said to me, words cut like a knife. You got to watch what you say. So we moved to California. I was verbally, emotionally abusive. I yelled. I had a temper. I was angry, even though I was saved. I was a mess. My former wife left me, took my two children filed a restraining order against me. I violated it. I went after two guys because someone told me something and I went after them. The police came. They threw me in jail. Put me on probation. They were going to let me out, but they found a warrant for my arrest in Texas. An old business deal gone bad. Friends, all things work together for good. All things work together for good. Doesn't say all things are good. It says all things. The good, the bad, the ugly, the abuse, the divorce, the abortions, whatever you've been through. All things work together for good. I got extradited from California back to Dallas. A free plane trip on American Airlines. The sheriff treated me like a king in that when I was in those 16 days in jail there in uh, Madera, California. My life changed. I got in the Word. Wasn't seeing my kids. Couldn't talk to my kids. And um, I got extradited back. The sheriff didn't even cuff me when he didn't have to cuff me. Impacted his life. The anointing of God was on my life at that time too. I come back to Texas. I get out. Got on probation again for a business deal gone bad. I mean, man, between parole, probations, uh, 
drug addiction, alcoholism. I've had a heart attack. I've had a stroke. I was blind 30 days from a drug overdose. I got scars on my body, suicide attempts. I've had a gun put to my neck, to my head, a knife put to my neck. <laughs> I've had people die next to me shot. God's hand has been on my life. I come back to Texas. I don't see my children for two years. And then over the last 10 and a half years, total of 12 and a half years, I saw my children less than 10 times. Lots of killed me. But what happened was it pushed me into my destiny, preaching, helping people, loving people. And God was working on me the whole time. I wrote four books. I still don't know how to write books. I just know how to, by faith, get pen and paper and put my heart on paper. Next thing I knew, a publisher came, editor came, four books are published. They're all over the world and people's lives are being changed because of my pain and suffering. But you know what, Jesus, our pain and suffering doesn't compare to what He did on the cross. He died. He was murdered. He was crucified. Yet He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now let me get to the end. So, April the 19th, just a little over two months ago, April 19th, 2021, I almost died. I was restored to my children July 20th of last year. July 20th, after 12 and a half years, I was restored to my son and my daughter. I'm now in Georgia with them. But on April 19th, they carried me out, the paramedics. I came within 60 seconds of dying. It was horrible. My daughter was there. My former wife was there. I turned white as a sheet, tears coming out. I was saying my goodbyes to my daughter. God took me to the brink of death. They even said it freaked them out. They thought I was dying. I thought I was dead. But they got me to the hospital in Georgia, Piedmont. I had blocked uh, bowel. I had intestinal infection and enteritis. Most people either die or have emergency surgery or go into septic shock. God spared my life. And through that incident, He made me into who I am today, what I've waited 20 plus years to be Christ-like, humble. No more Clark. Christ in me, the hope of glory is all about Him. It's all about Jesus. It's all about people. And when I got out of that hospital and came home, the Lord impressed to my heart. He said, Clark, I didn't allow you to live for you. I allowed you to live for others to tell your story. I love lost people. I love addicted people. I love suicidal people. I love the people that most people give up on. I've now walked into my destiny at 60 years old. Moses didn't get started till he was 80. Clark Crawford's getting started at 60. I want to share my story. I want to preach the uncompromised Word of God. I want to people see people saved, healed, delivered, transformed, changed. Invite me to where you are. I'll go anywhere. I'll go anywhere to share my story and tell people about Jesus. I hope this touches you wherever you are. You've not blown it so bad God can't use you. As a matter of fact, the worse you've been, the more God can use you. All things work together for good. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Ephesians 3, 20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think according to the power working in you. If you don't know Jesus, I'm asking you to repent of your sins. Ask Jesus to come into your heart as you're watching this. He'll save you. He'll change your life. And you'll be sharing your testimony one day. With God, all things are possible. God is a God of restoration. Everything has been stolen. God will give back and it'll be so much more, so much better. Again, I'm Clark Crawford. 
I love you. I bless you. And I declare and decree that the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life. I hope to see you very soon. God bless you.